Hello and welcome to episode 9 of the Comic Book Showcase. My name is Jamie Hari, founder of the Marvel and DC Database. Welcome to uh, our conversation about Arrow. Uh, we're going to talk about season 2 specifically and the finale on Thinkable. Um, uh, today I'm joined by Mike, Billy, and Rab. And uh, we'll jump right over to, uh, to Billy. Um, I'm going to toss this over to you. What did you think about uh, the finale? I love what this show is doing right now. The finale is, I feel like I'm watching not just for a superhero show, but some of the craziest, like, nonstop balls to the wall insanity on television right now. The whole series this season, I feel like last season, they kind of, like, they, they did stuff that was dark and unexpected, but they were still doing this very Smallville thing of, like, trying to distance themselves away from the comic book goofiness. Um, you know, with, like, having him, like, we can't call him Green Arrow, where he's, like, the, the say, like, you can't call him Superman, he's got to be the blur. Uh, and the, like, silly thing with the eye makeup. And this season, they're really starting to embrace all of that. Like, yeah, like, let's have legions of masked, insane people hopped up on a super soldier serum. And let's have, like, the domino mask and the family of badass superheroes all working together. It's fantastic. I love it. Brad, what did you think? I think uh, the finale, at least, was pretty intense. I mean, given what had come before, I was it. The, it felt like a kind of a slow burn for me, anyway. The show, really, leading up leading up to that point, it was like there's a lot of stuff happening, but then it's sort of like the stuff was happening over more episodes than I felt were necessary. And then it ramped up really quick, and it was like, wham, here's our finale, and they're, like, bringing in all of the bad guys, and then the bad guys are there, and they're killing people. That's fair. I will give you the... <laughs> no, it does... Uh, the biggest criticism I've seen people have is that the show does kind of have, like, a very soap opery feel. And yeah. some people really resent that. I kind of... I enjoy it in my, like, horrible romantic comedy way. <laughs> But it's also, uh, like, I have a lot of female friends who are much more interested in the show because instead of just being, like, sexy ladies all the time, it really focuses on, uh, like, relationships between characters and, and shirtless dudes. <laughs> Mostly shirtless dudes. But, yeah. Yeah, but some of the female characters on that show are really weak female characters. Like, yeah. the end of that uh, season's episode when they have uh, the Canary character leaving to go back join the League of Assassins, and she does this whole, like, here, take my jacket, I'm passing the torque <sighs> off to you. It was kind of, I don't know, weak. Like, the, it wasn't a very strong female character in that, that role, and none of them, except for the, like... Uh, alternate Talia Al Ghul, heir of Ra's Al Ghul. Lisa uh, Ratko, who in the comic books uh, usurps Ra's Al Ghul and has him murdered. Yeah, so that character, very strong, dominant female character, but you kind of have to be to be a leader of the uh, League of Assassins. But, yeah, I'm not a fan of the female characters on that show. I, I, think... I, just, I don't think that to be a strong female character, you necessarily need to be, like, a domineering one. I, re I think that Black Canary is one of the best new characters in the show this season as far as, like, depth and emotional relationships with other people. I know a lot of people hate Laurel and feel kind of stuck with her at this point. It seems like they originally wanted her to be Black Canary uh, just by based on her name, and then at a certain point they were just like, uh, you know, maybe not. And I'm not sure why they took Black Canary off the show this season, but it's weird seeing how the... Like, they, it feels like they keep trying to do new things with Laurel to make her fit in with the show that's moved past her role. Now, do you think they will actually get rid of Dinah, or, or not Dinah, fake Dinah, Sarah, and, or will she come back for the... Like, maybe they're just going to have a hiatus. Who knows? I mean, oh, yeah. not a hiatus, but like a time jump. But uh, going back to uh, actual Dinah, flipping show, they... <laughs> I feel like her character has become very uh, grating. I agree with everyone who feels that she's become we're great. We're talking about Laurel now? Yes, Laurel. God! Oh, yeah, yeah. Show! <laughs> That's where it's so confusing. It's like, which character is actual this character? It bothers me specifically because I'm so familiar with the comic book versions that it... it 
irks me that they're using different names. So, so hold on a second. Um, one thing I think that, um, I, going back to Billy's point about how uh, a, a strong female character doesn't necessarily have to be one that's either physically strong or, you know, in some way, you know, ruling queen international or whatever the case may be, but I think that generally a, a strong character, whether it's female or male, usually has to do with how much effort they put into building a character's backstory. So, um, Generally, do we feel that there's an equal and, and sufficient amount of time being given to the backstories of the various characters, including Laurel and um, Felicity, for instance? And or or is it uh, is that Mike kind of how you feel? Why that they're a little flat and weak? Is is there just not enough development? Or well, I think that there's too many supporting characters for this show. Like there is, like so many. Like you could easily trim out like four characters. And you would have enough people that you could develop full character plots for these people and have the show grow and progress. But I feel that there's just so many people. I mean, they did kill off or remove a couple of the characters from the show, which, like, will help. But there's, like, there was still so many people for that show. I kind of love that it feels like a big family. I like that there are a lot... I like that there are a lot of characters, like, they're bringing in characters like... Uh, like Sin and like Roy, and you, I like seeing them, but I feel like sometimes maybe they're a little too early for their time in the in the context of the show's timeline. Or I I think everyone is kind of I like everyone being there, but I feel like some people aren't being fleshed out. I would really like to see more of Felicity's backstory. I would really like to see more of Diggle's backstory. I would like I mean I'd like to see more of everyone's backstory in like standalone episodes if I could, but that's a little lost. Felicity's Felicity has definitely been like a weird breakout character for this show where she's not like she's barely related to her character in the comic books at all, but she has become like the like the Oliver Felicity relationship drives people insane. Well, it's, it's, it would be so much fun to watch if it wasn't so torturing. Um, I really enjoyed in episode 10 when she, it's like just after the incident um, with Barry and she comes, she's essentially coming back to the show um, at that point and uh, Oliver gets really, I guess, kind of jealous of the fact that she wasn't there for a situation that occurred with the bombing and she was off you know, watching over Comatose Barry, and I thought that kind of, when it goes all the way to the end of the uh, season, and you have him saying, you know, that she's his one true love, and it's not Laurel, and I, I thought that was, like, a good, like, it's it's there. He is clearly has, emo he clearly has emotions for her, and, like, it's, they are growing it within the series, but it's more of that, like, it's always going to be that bond, that friendship, that really solid, not like it's a love, but it's still that love. Yeah. It's, uh, that was one of the most, like, infuriating, but in a way that I really like things about the finale, was that there's there's always that cliche in an action movie where the person's like, oh, well, like, I'm retiring tomorrow. Here's a picture of my wife and kids. Can't wait. And then you know they're going to get killed, like, immediately. And my favorite thing that Unthinkable did was it gave every single character on the show a moment like that to give you that doubt. Like, oh, like, Phil, like Oliver's finally proclaiming his love to Felicity. No way she's going to make it out the episode. Oh, Jiggle's having a kid. Uh, no way they're making it out the episode. And then, like, the one character who they didn't give that kind of moment to, Quentin Lance, is the character who ended up being actually shot, and that really took me by surprise. Shot? Or did he just get, like... Uh, internal bleeding due to, like... Oh, yeah, it was internal bleeding, but it, they left it in serious doubt as to whether or not he's going to be okay. So, uh, one thing we've been talking about is sort of the, the difference between, um, you know, you just mentioned Felicity Smoke, for instance, that basically has nothing to do with uh, the character uh, of the same name in the comic book. Um, how do we feel about the um, difference of portrayal of uh, not only... Uh, Ollie himself, but uh, all the supporting cast versus other portrayals, whether it's in the comics, or I'd like to specifically pick on uh, Justin Hartley's uh, portrayal of Ollie in Smallville. Uh, did anyone like Justin Hartley's portrayal in Smallville? Yeah, sure. I thought it was pretty okay. I mean, <coughs> I liked it better. I, I don't want to say I liked it better than this one, because it's two different worlds. It's two different, like, 
portrayals in general, but I liked his version a lot. I wish he had had a beard. Wasn't Similarly, he, <laughs> wasn't he Aquaman, think, though? No. Well, oh, he was. They then got him to be on the... They were doing a pilot for an Aquaman TV series called yeah. Mercy Reef, and they had him also play Aquaman in that show, but that wasn't in, Smar- in Smallville continuity. No, but it was still kind of weird seeing him as, like, two yeah. DC heroes. I mean, like, I, it was hard to ignore, but mm-hmm. I tried to. It was just Let's like. Let's not get too hung up on Justin Hartley's IMDb page. <laughs> <laughs> Next episode, all about Mercy Reef. Uh, yeah, I was going to. I feel like Green Arrow and Smallville sort of suffered from the same problem that Green Arrow does on Arrow, where it seems to be very clear that the writers kind of want to be doing a show about Batman but they can't for legal reasons. And I'm still, I'm loving that show. I'm loving that we get to see, and Green Arrow has, at his core, is basically just Robin Hood Batman anyway. But there, I feel like you, you can see both of them have places where a lot of it is really more similar to like a Bruce Wayne type character than, that, than the like insane uh, socio-political liberal champion Oliver Queen. I think that that you keep saying that he's an insane liberal liberal champion. I think that's a very uh, that's a almost a closed-minded view of the character. I mean, I oh. know you've read what I've read, so I, yeah. I feel like I do. I I personally agree very heavily with Green Arrow's liberal politics, but I feel like they can be very alienating to a lot of readers who aren't from liberal areas. Well, I mean, I, I feel like you're reducing the character of Green Arrow in general to his liberal values. When I, whereas, say, when I read Mike Grell's run on Green Arrow, like the first 80 issues of Green Arrow Volume 2 and The Longbow Hunter, <coughs> which I think some of, they've drawn a lot from Arrow from that series, but not all of, not all of the things that I wish they had, like the dynamic between him and... Well, you, they can't do that at this time, but the dynamic between he and Black Canary in that book is very real, very human, and it's a source of drama that I think girls would enjoy watching or women would enjoy watching in the same way that they enjoy watching Arrow emotional, like, soapy stuff. I guess, for me, a lot of, like the heart of Oliver Queen as a character. My favorite moment summarizing who Oliver Queen is is there's this great sequence in 52 where uh, he see, where there's, a, like, Star City has very recently been demolished and he's hanging out in the, like, recently in this area that's turned into a, just, like, a horrible uh, rubble-filled ghetto and he sees a guy walking down... He sees a guy running out of a store carrying a bag and... Uh, Behind him, the shopkeeper's running outside, yelling, "Stop, thief!" And Green Arrow, he shoots, uh, he sh- and he shoots the shopkeeper, and he knocks the shopkeeper down with like one of those arrows that knocks out his legs. And Ellen Gated Man goes, "Hey, you know, you uh, you shot the wrong guy. You hit the shopkeeper. How'd you miss?" And Green Arrow goes, "Oh, uh, I I heard somebody shout, shop, shout, stop, thief!" And I shot the guy who was charging. 15 bucks for diapers in a war zone. And, like, that's, that's you know, for me, he's all about that, like, taking down uh, corporate fat cats and anybody with there's like, a very significant social justice slant to it that I think you don't necessarily see with a lot of other heroes who are much more concerned about the, uh, fighting, like, super-powered bad guys and less about these, like, economic rich versus poor problems. But I don't see that him being portrayed that way in the show. I see... It's like, and it's really hard not to see this, but it's very much a Batman Bruce Wayne persona that's being played out in the show, in my opinion. I see him with his voice distortion and, you know, this rich kid running around as a vigilante. It's like, it's Batman. I don't think that that's, that doesn't make me enjoy the show any less. I would definitely love to be seeing a more authentic, like, Oliver Queen as we have him now. Uh, show, but it is, it definitely, you can't ignore the fact that it's very, it's a Batman-flavored Green Arrow, which Green Arrow has always been. Green Arrow was originally created as a Batman 
and rip off. Sorry, guys. I'm going to actually have to stop it there. I, I do apologize, but we are out of time for this week's episode. Uh, there's actually quite a bit left to discuss, so please do check out the uh, rest of our pedantic commentary in the extended version <laughs> of today's episode. Um, and as always, uh, please feel free to comment below and tell us why each and every one of our opinions is wrong and how we're wrong. Uh, and uh, i leave you with one final question. Um, where do you think Arrow should actually go in Season 3? Uh, that one's up to you guys. You tell us in the comments below what you think, and uh, check out the extended version for the rest of uh, what we had to say about tonight's topic. And that's a wrap for another episode of the Comic Book Showcase. Join us again live via chat or Twitter next week. Like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter. And to learn more about today's topics, check out the Marvel and DC databases on Wikia, the ultimate resources for comic book information anywhere. <laughs>